Hey everyone, welcome back to Mel's Mountain Garage. This time around, I'm gonna work on a lawnmower. Normally it's cars, like Rusty, but not doing that this time. I need to fix this mower. We've got a whole boatload of acreage and it ain't running too well. It is a Cub Cadet LT 1045 with a Polar Courage 20. I'm gonna replace the car, fuel pump, plug, some fuel line, air filter, just a general all-around tune-up. I'll change the oil next time. I had already put tubes on the tires because feedless tires, while they're great on an everyday driver, when you leave your shit sit around all year, the tires dry out and they leak through all the cracks. So I've already got that sorted, and I'm going to try and get the engine right. It runs good normally. Every once in a blue moon, the car will just start flaking out. And I just, for the life of me, I try fixing it a multitude of times. I put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. I've Take it apart, it's just, who knows, there, there may be something in one of the passages or the emulsion tube that I can't see or I can't get out. So it's, you know, it's easier to just replace it and it's in it, it's inexpensive. So that's why I don't mind doing it. The whole kit with all the parts was 30 bucks and I'll show you the parts here real quick, but you know, kind of follow along. It's not instructional, but kind of follow along as I go and sort out the mower. Gotta love Amazon. Here is the replacement carburetor. It's already got the fuel shut off solenoid, which has been replaced on that car. But honestly, this entire kit costs as much as the replacement shut off solenoid. So we'll slap this on there. We've got a box, a package here with a fuel filter. You can see the fuel shut off, a plug, the plug connector for the fuel shut off solenoid, some gaskets, fuel hose, air filter, crankcase foamy. And a replacement fuel pump, which has also been replaced, but it's a whole kit, so I'm just gonna slap it all on there. Courtesy of Amazon, obviously I paid for it, but you know it's uh, it was thirty one dollars, I believe. Here is the mower, Cub Cadet. I think it's a '90s model. It is pretty old. It's not in terrible shape at all. My cousin's husband had it. And then he, he got it off of his dad. And once he moved, he got rid of it, and I ended up with it. The tube or rear tires have got the slime tubes in them. The tires got great treads, just don't hold air. Front tires have got tubes in them. And believe it or not, I replaced them two years ago before I deployed to the desert. New belts on a deck. I need to replace one of them deck wheels, like that one on the other side. It's cracked. Uh, the little indicator works, but the plastic's gone. Seat's great, it's not torn. So we'll pop into this here Kohler motor. Like I said, it's a Kohler Courage 20. And right now I can literally smell the fuel. Leaks a bit of oil, burns a bit of oil, but it's fine. All oh, these jobs. Lawnmowers aren't hard to repair. They really aren't. I got my start on fixing vehicles and building hot rods on small engines, doing mini bikes and go karts and the like. You know, I got all this. This is all replacement now. I'll hold on to the old stuff just because in the pinch. But just looking up into the light, you can't even see through it. I pull this top cover off. There is no fuel shut off on this, and I want to add it on there, and then we'll swap out all those lines. But I have hose clamps, hose cut off clamps. So let me go grab some tools. Handful of tools. Good beer. I've got these plastic hose pinchers. I got dig them all two different sizes. I got these from Harbor Freight. Made no sense in spending a whole boatload of money. Pretty much just pinch the hose off. So you're not using pliers or flight scripts or anything like that. Take the top cover off. Pull the dipstick out. I mean, I want to use this step. I have a magnet tray here somewhere. I'll possibly get it so I don't lose all of my crap. <clears throat> but this will get the cover off to get us access to... Fuel pump, the fuel line, and whatnot. That up out the way. That up out 
out the way. And you can see the flywheel, the little fan to help keep it cool. Fuel pump sitting right there on the air filter housing. So we'll pull all that off. The plug's also buried under here, and I'll, I'll show you that here in a hot minute. So let me, let me pop that air filter housing off. This way we can get the carb off. Well, if you don't have pig mats, get yourself some pig mats. Right? Keep a collection of them. Just for this sort of thing. Whether it's small engines or big engines or hot rods or whatever. Especially consider I'd rather not get a whole bit of oil on my floor or my garage. Eventually, Mountain Garage will have a nice big pole barn that I can do this stuff in. In the interim, the attached garage works. But I can tell you, my wife would rather me have my shop so I'm not doing this shit in the house. Or right attached to the house. And there's the air filter housing. You see on the back. That little bracket holds the fuel pump. I've had it off so many times, it's all tweaked. Old gasket. You disconnect the, the plug, and it's already like leaking fuel. Like that solenoid must be flaked out or going bad or there's something in the carburetor and the float's not the needle is not closing all the way on the seat because <clears throat> like I said it, it it reeks like fuel right now and it's got a power wire to the ignition switch just disconnect that Carb housing was held on, or the car was held on with a 10mm, the cover was an 8mm, this ground wire is an 8mm. You can get yourself a, a flat head or possibly a 7mm I think it is for the all the random fuel lines. I'm gonna, Now, the kid gave me a bunch of squeeze clamps, and I'll use the squeeze clamps. It's not a fuel injected vehicle. It's not under a whole boatload of pressure. You know, the squeeze clamps will be perfectly fine, especially if you have new pliable hose. And frankly, some of this shit's pretty hard. All right, got a drink in, get some lines. You know, it sucks. Can't listen to can't listen to music. I mean, I can if I had like. If I had like earplugs, you know, or freaking, uh, what should I call it? Headphones. So, filming, filming videos, and you pretty much have to do it in silence, and just sing in your head. <laughs> but there is the fuel pump. It was replaced at one time, but I'm pretty sure it worked. I mean, obviously it works, it was running, whether or not it was sketched out or got low pressure or some bullshit like that, I don't know. But you can see the clamps are doing its job because that tank, that fuel tank, has got five gallons of fuel in it. So it's absolutely full. And I'm smoking. Don't try this at home. I slap the carb off, pull your linkages off cover the hole so you don't dump the fuel bowl out and you can see the solenoid there's a dinky little ground wire sitting there and it's almost broke so I'm actually going to fix that here give it a couple tweaks it'll probably fall the hell off and slap the new one on I'll end up holding on to this for spare parts or something like that there's the 
old harness. They give me a replacement harness, so I will use it. But I'll hold on to that also. I don't throw anything away. Pull the heat shield off. You can see it's kind of janky, honestly, if you ask me. I mean, it's got a gasket up against the engine, but there's a cylinder head. Then it's heat shield, then it's gasket, but that bolt runs through the heat shield. So, I'll take it, get the bolt out of there. I'll clean that up. Clean it. The engine block up. Get them fucking nuggets out of there. Look at that. That gas gets smoked. Wow. Got like a little deflector, an air deflector to split it up into the cylinder head. So yeah, I mean, literally, Video Magic will make this two minutes and it probably took me ten because I kept stopping the camera and getting fools. But it's all apart. I'll do some cleanup and then we'll slap it all back together. Alright, so without you guys having a noise, use my wizard. A dull burnt uh, uh, Scotch Sprite raw lock disc. Cleaned off the engine block right quick. Now, that carburetor comes with two new gaskets. Wonderful. It's awesome. One for the carb goes to the heat shield. And another gasket for the filter housing to the carburetor. Unfortunately, the gasket that's all jacked up goes on the other side of the heat shield. And they didn't give me one of those. So, I am going to have to... I got some gasket material on my... And one of my cabinets over here, and where I'm going to fabricate a new gasket. Now, you could probably, uh, I've oftentimes used like no shit beer case boxes because it was real thin cardboard, something like that, Yingling box in there, cereal boxes. Uh, but I have legitimate gasket material, so that is what I want to use. So let me go on ahead and make a new gasket, and then we can proceed and put this together. Oh, I want to use that gasket as a template, jacked it all up. These guys have probably seen this before on the interwebs, but you can use, you can use your uh, existing part to do what you need to do. Wipe a little grease or dirt on your hammer. Nice general outline, so I'll turn around it, start the hole small, and we'll take it from there. And I'll use my, I got gasket punches to punch that hole out real nice. Result, got the gasket made. While it's not pretty, I don't care. Uh, I didn't have nothing to work with. The important thing is, is it sits on a seal, doesn't block the port. I have some Permatex copper spray gasket that I just laid on there. I've got this gasket material here from one of the big parts houses. I'm sure you can get it at O'Reilly's, Advanced Auto, AutoZone, Pep Boys, whatever you have near you. I have some inexpensive gasket punches. I had really, really nice ones some time ago, and when you keep beating on shit, they get all dull and jacked up. So I, I they're, who the hell knows where they're, maybe Harbor Freight, I don't know. And... Yeah, so I have that on there. I put a little dab of black RTV on the one side where this stud is. Like, sorry, where the stud is. And that's only because the, I can't, like, hold it in place so I have the whole carb stack, shit fest stacked together. So we do have a gasket made, and we'll press on and get the rest of it. Zoom in a little bit there, a little bit there for your... 
Yield of pleasure. Got my heat shield. My new gasket. I, you can see there's only one stud here. If I don't block it with my ass. Crack. Figures. You guys can see a little bit of difficulty in setting that whole crap fest up. Trying to stack a multitude of gaskets in there, grounds. That carburetor doesn't have it if I was smart, which I'm not. I should have put this on there first. The gasket. And that actually would have held the gasket on. on that heat shield plate that I was talking about. Okay. Then I'll use the eight mil again. Get the, not only the ground, but more importantly, that'll hold the heat shield on along with the, along with the gasket. You gotta be careful though, because when you tighten it up, get a, a little bit of a torque on it. It wants to take the ground wire and do yourself a favor. And start to set up the ground wire way out of the way, which we've done. And that don't booger the Wires all up, the sun oil only goes together one way. The sun oil plug is keyed. Let's see if I can even get it in. The fuck is in here? Fortunately, I have the old one. Ah. Theoretically, when you turn the key on, it's turn this. I don't know if you can hear it. See the solo on the bottom. See if we can hear it. Here, clicking. Just right here, when you turn it off. The pin will comes up and blocks the carb. Not only do I have a shut off, but that's what keeps the fuel from running into the carb, even if your float is jacked up. So that works. I don't recall the other one doing that. I think the other one was, was flaked out. So let me set this back up and cut some fuel hose. Holy shit, that was actually a mission. Sorry, I didn't get video of it. I started to get frustrated. But the... Uh, Carb spacer, air, uh, shield, fuel pump is on. Like I told you guys before, none of these are ever meant to be instructional per se. But the fuel pump is mounted, the fuel line going to the car. I'm really just duplicating this line from there to there. It's just new pump and I'm now going to do that line and run that guy from the fuel pump with this uh this is your clamp there's a a little like rubber hose clamp or rubber coated clamp here a little bit of nature's lubricant that guy on there I like these clamps these are actually pretty quality spring clamps I mean I'm really 
I'm really happy with the $30 purchase. We'll bite this off here. And this is the, you know, the fuel hose with the barb shit in it. I put the fuel filter on, and I see the fuel filter. The inlet will have the inlet come and it goes all around the filter. It's got all that filter media to collect shit. And the fuel will go through the media and come out here. So this will go to the switch or the fuel shut off. The other side will go to the actual fuel line. And I'll just have to nip this back a little bit to pick up the fuel shut off. Now I do have a electric, the electric solenoid, but like I told you guys before, that solenoid is being a little flaky, so just adding this, uh, adding a mechanical fuel shut off in there, especially for long term storage over the winter, you know, sitting around, <clears throat> not going to get used for a while. You don't have to worry about losing five gallons of gas through the carburetor and all the ground, especially with the amount of money freaking gas costs nowadays. It'd be different if that shit was like a dollar or something. I wouldn't give it for shit. I'd just nuke it out and like set the fuck thing on fire. But we'll have that there. Got that fuel shut off. I'm just gonna make this really short just to catch the shut off. Hopefully it's not too long. I think I, I have to, do I have to use right one? <clears throat> so yeah, so there's the new fuel line. Get the shut off. I can see the fuel is getting up in there, so that'll be good once that fuel pump goes. I'll swap the spark plug out and we'll fire it up. Sweet. Swap the plug out. You know, I had an MGKR plug in there, but it was looking, looking pretty crusty, so I put the China replacement plug in there. Let's give it a little choke. Got the e brake on. Fuel all the way up to the carburetor. Fuel filter's filled, so it shouldn't be but a, a moment or two, I hope. That's a fucking win, if you ask me. It used to surge real bad. All right, well, if you ask me, that was a win. $31 on Amazon for a who the heck knows where. I don't know if it's from China. I prefer to get American stuff, but hey, it's, it's what I could find. Uh, had to make a gasket, some new fuel line, added a manual fuel shut off just in case it flakes out again because... That solenoid would stop working at times, whether there was dirt in there or it was a solenoid flaking out and it would just like dump fuel all over the ground. So there's definitely no parking this bucket in the shed. But it can't ask for a whole lot considering a mower's probably 20 years old. Like who the hell knows? But I'll, we'll get a little bit of film here, a little time lapse or something like that. Put the cover all back on it. I don't have an oil filter though, I would have liked to change it. Uh, it is a little low on oil. It does burn oil. I think it's got a bad oil control ring, but that's okay for as much as I can run it. 
it, it doesn't burn a whole lot of oil. I just smoke sometimes. Uh, I will replace that battery because it's a bit weak. But all in all, I mean, I'm, I, I am absolutely happy. Uh, I'll keep all the old parts just in case, but, you know, it, it took me longer to film it and set the camera up than it did to actually do it. So if you got a ride mower and, you know, I don't want to put the small business guy out, but if you're a, a car guy or a little bit of a tinkerer and you've got a basic bit of handful of tools, I mean, you can definitely do this shit by yourself. I didn't even change the idle mixture screws or nothing on the car, but frankly, I'm not going to till it gets hot and I run it around. I am on a mountain. I got 2,200 foot elevation, so I may need a tweak or two. But as it sets, it, it once the fuel got to the ball, it fired right up, so I'm happy. Oh yeah. All right, let's put it back together. Turn off my not paid for music. Mm. Courtesy of Sirius XM. Like I said, you, uh, take a little bit, a couple hand tools. Important thing is knowing what you need to replace to actually be able to do it. Once you figure that out, the internet and everything how it is, it's kind of easy to just watch a YouTube video like you're watching right now for some dude that did it. You gotta sort it. Had a handful of hand tools that you can get if you don't even have them. I mean, if you're one of those guys that's got four generations of hand me down standard tools, you can run a Harbor Freight or Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a little quarter inch socket kit. Because frankly, some pliers, quarter inch socket kit, <clears throat> some wrenches is all that you really need to maintain one of these. Each year you check your oil, grease the Zerk fittings, make sure your battery is good, change the filter, clean the plug, and, you know, filter, I can't screw your phone me, you see it only fitting there kind of one way. We're gonna roll gas kicks on the best shit. Stick that guy in there. You see how it fits. It's got a little <clears throat> recess in it. to get that guy out of the recess. Slap the covers on. <clears throat> Make sure you didn't forget anything. Lose any tools. Top off your oil. That is swapping out the carb, air filter, spark plug, fuel filter, some fuel hose. That's it for the Cub Cadet LT 1045. Thanks for watching Mel's Mountain Garage. Thanks for following us along. Not meant to be instructional, but maybe you learned something out of it. Whether it's a car, a lawnmower, a go-kart, backhoe, doesn't matter, man. It bleeds burn fuel. I'm interested. I'm working on it. And I'm fighting it. <laughs> it's, it's whatever. But, yeah, so this guy's got a little bit, you know, a bunch more life into it. Uh, relatively inexpensive. Probably cost me more money in beer than it did in parts to press through, but it's done, so... 
Again, thanks for checking it out. Please hit the like, subscribe, hit that little bell in there to get notified of new videos. Check out my Instagram at Mel's Mountain Garage because I put stuff on there daily, at least once a day, maybe twice, two, three times. Uh, we've got a 55 Chevy that I'm working on. It belongs to my brother. I got the 32 Ford here behind the camera, my wagon, and a whole boatload of other stuff. So, again, thanks for checking it out, and I appreciate it. We'll see you.